Online multiplayer has completely changed the landscape of video games in the last decades, and if a game has multiplayer nowadays, you'll know about it. That was not always the case, though. Hi, folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 mind blowing secret multiplayer modes in games. To preface this one, it used to be that couch co op and stuff like that was experimental and stuff that was kind of put together on a whim by developers who were just thinking this stuff. The kind of multiplayer modes we're going to be talking talking about in this video are unfinished in a lot of cases, unpolished in most cases, and completely bizarre in all cases. So without further ado, starting off at number 10, shared screen co-op in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. So you can actually play GTA San Andreas with a friend. It's not really something people had any idea about either. And like a lot of these half finished cooperative modes that were either not advertised or completely hidden, this is a single screen experience. You can activate it from specific markers on the map, and the second player gets to pick their character from a lineup of models. After you have that, the camera zooms out, and it changes you together. Instead of being in third person, the game swaps to an overhead, more isometric style perspective, and it dynamically changes as you play. Now, you're not able to see too far ahead, and in all seriousness, it wasn't really easy to control anything or see who was attacking you a lot of the time. That's Said it was a very cool mode and would be a lot of fun to see officially in a GTA game, but nowadays we have a massively multiplayer city. And number nine is Duck Hunt, where the second controller is the duck. Now this is going a long ways back into the 1980s, but everyone knows Duck Hunt. Shooting down ducks on the NES with the little dog laughing and pointing when you inevitably miss. Uh, did you know you can play this one with friends? Like plug in a second controller and a person can take control of the duck. Now it only works when the duck's on screen, so obviously this makes the already tricky task of shooting ducks a little harder when your friend's going nuts on the controller right next to you. Artificial intelligence was not uh, what we would call particularly well developed way back then. So when a person is in control, the duck itself is significantly more unpredictable. So you end up getting laughed at significantly more by that dang dog. Now obviously it's completely intentional, but that dog is a jerk. At number 8, you can play every single player level in Turok 2 in multiplayer. Now, I think all of us who were around at the time have some pretty great memories playing multiplayer matches all day and all night with friends and family on the Nintendo 64. Throw in some pizza, soft drinks, and Oreos, and that's a weekend. When you were a kid, though, you would often use your imagination to come up with new scenarios that are not supported by the game you're playing. Like, you couldn't do co-op in most first-person shooters with friends, so you pretend the multiplayer levels were single player levels and someone would play the designated enemy. It would play out kind of like a role play and because of the flexibility of how the matches work you could even call it an early form of asymmetrical PvP. But the full co-op experience is possible and none of that nonsense is necessary in Turok 2. Using cheat codes, you and a few friends could actually load up single player levels while you're in multiplayer and play them as a co-op level. I mean, not perfectly, of course. Some of the levels were extremely buggy when you use this method and it would crash the game a lot. But that doesn't mean it wasn't an incredibly great time to play Turok 2 going around shooting AI bad guys with a friend. I mean, when you think about it, this is a precursor to a lot of the types of games we play today. And number seven, racing with a friendly cheat in Diddy Kong Racing. Cooperative modes were so rare and experimental during the Nintendo 64 years that a lot of games hid the features behind cheat codes, which is something that makes Diddy Kong Racing bizarre in that there is an entire two-player adventure mode hidden behind a cheat code. Two friends can play the whole thing together. I've never really heard of a racing game with this kind of a feature, and I'm guessing the reason it wasn't advertised is because it makes the game extremely easy, at least compared to how it actually is. When I was little and played this game, it was pretty tough. But once you get a second player on your side, it makes everything way easier. As long as both players are working together, you can target the AI with power-ups and cut a swath of banana-based destruction through pretty much every track. If you're happy with taking first and second place, uh, you can. Like, you will be fine. 
And number six is Doppelganger Co-op from Devil May Cry 3. Probably one of the weirdest cooperative experiences I've ever seen. And it even works on the re-releases on the PlayStation 3 version. There's a combat style in Devil May Cry 3 called Doppelganger that spawns a second Dante when you Devil Trigger. If the second controller is plugged into the PS2, a friend can take direct control of that bonus Dante. Now, it obviously doesn't last super long, only as long as the Devil Trigger, but there's also a way around this. If you play DMC3 enough, you can unlock Unlimited Devil Trigger, and once you do, you can play the entire game with a friend. And that's not all. Late in the game, when Dante fights alongside his evil brother Virgil, a second player can take direct control of that guy, too. It's actually kind of really weird. Modern games don't really throw in experimental features like this. And obviously, I kind of think that sucks, because it's fun to have these extra things that you didn't think were in the game that allow you to play along with a friend. Friend. At number 5 is playing battles with friends in Final Fantasy 4, 6, and 9. Now here's the wild thing about this. Uh, it is a prevalent feature that exists in multiple entries of Final Fantasy, and I just had no idea it existed. In Final Fantasy 4, Final Fantasy 6, widely regarded as the best Final Fantasy game by a lot of old school fans, and Final Fantasy 9, you can play cooperative battles with friends. Each player is assigned half the party members during battle, which works in these games because each of them has four party members. You'll note that a lot of Final Fantasy games only have three, Final Fantasy 7 of course being probably the prime example, but you get half the party members during the battle and you control them when their ATB meter fills. All you have to do is plug in a second controller on the SNES to the PlayStation 1. Who would have known? Now player 1 still controls everything outside the battle. They'll be doing all the party selection or solving the puzzles in the dungeons. Player 2 only gets control of specific character slots, and that makes this mode kind of a good way to introduce JRPGs to a new player, like a maybe a younger sibling or a friend who doesn't quite understand what it's about, without overwhelming them with all the weird systems. Because in terms of building your party and coordinating the equipment and everything, you can do that with the friend having a discussion and putting it all together. Honestly, I wish I had known about this much earlier in life. And number four, in Mega Man 7, there is an entire versus mode, and it's the only way to play as base. The way you can access this mode is by inputting the code 14, 15, 55, 85, 78, 23, 62, 51, and holding L and R. And that takes you to a character select menu. So you can select different characters or robot masters to duke it out like a sort of a simplified fighting mode, like in uh, Shovel Knight is a recent game that did this. Shovel Knight however, didn't hide their versus mode behind a code. This basically gave you a whole new fighting game version of Mega Man, though. And like I said, it, and for a really long time, it was the only way to play as Mega Man's new rival, Base, the black-clad successor to Proto Man's vacant throne. Base would later become playable in Mega Man 10, but that's years in the future. At number three, now Ico is all about holding hands. You have to lead this strange glowing girl named Yorda away from danger, and to do it, Ico holds her hand to complete the dangerous journey. Now, here's the interesting thing. You can actually stop all of the hand-holding and get a friend to play as Yorda, which turns Ico into kind of an early co-op puzzle game. You can kind of see the similarity to something along the lines of It Takes Two or Brothers A Tale of Two Sons or A Way Out, that type of a thing. After completing the main story, this cooperative mode will unlock. Player 2 can control Yorda freely, making the game a, a little, well, actually a lot easier for Aiko. She can help solve puzzles, follow you around, and avoid enemies a whole lot more effectively than the pretty primitive AI that, by today's standards, is not great. Now, I've played through this game multiple times, and I just outright forgot that this mode existed. And number two in Banjo-Tooie, you can possess enemies with the Devil Bottle's ghost. Probably one of the weirdest secrets in any game was found in Banjo-Tooie. Using Game Shark or emulation, it's possible to access a really weird bit of cut content where the second player can control an evil version of Bottle's ghost. Devil Bottles, as he's referred to in the Banjo Wiki, would be a player character that player two can use to possess nearby enemies. The goal was to use possessed enemies to defeat Banjo-Kazooie, and doing so swapped the players, giving control 
control of Banjo to Player 1, and giving Devil Bottles to Player 2. It's basically just an endless tug of war. This mode helpfully takes away the inevitable battle between the two young boys trying to get the controller away from each other by, by, by making it so that you experience it in game. There's kind of a similar mode in Perfect Dark. It's called Counter Operative, which was also one of my favorite modes growing up. And finally at number one, Star Ocean 3's side quests that you can beat to unlock versus mode. Now you don't expect to find a fighting versus mode in a JRPG, but you can unlock one in Star Ocean 3. By completing a specific dungeon and returning the game board item to a specific character, you can unlock a special mode where two players can battle it out. Works on the same battle engine as the main game, except you're fighting your friends instead. Just the idea of a mode like this in a JRPG is honestly mind blowing to me. Multiplayer features, even if it's just couch co-op, don't just happen. Developers have to put some time in to make these things work, so including these weird experimental features in major games has kind of died out. You kind of had to look to indie games now to find these completely weird, ultimately useless, but still awesome features like this. And that's all for today. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.